All right, so before I decide where to mount the new spring hangers, I need to determine if in fact that the axle that I just removed was square to the rear of the trailer because I know it towed straight and it worked out. So in other words, if for instance, if this side of the leaf springs were mounted a quarter inch off from the measurement I'm going to get on the other side, but I know that it towed straight and everything was square, then I need to duplicate that with the new spring hanger. So let's, I'm going to measure from the back of the rear spring hanger bolt and I'm going to get exactly 30 and 5 eighths. So now for the other side, let's measure from the same exact spot we're going to get exactly from the rear the back part of the bolt 30 and 5 eighths see that so all that means is i just need to make sure when i mount the rear spring hangers uh, they're exactly the same measurement from the rear of the trailer and i know everything else will be square so got that figured out all right, so let's answer the axle length question. Let's measure the old one. From the end of the spindle, <laughs> we can keep it together. To the end of this spindle, we have 61 and a quarter inches exactly. Now, from the end of that spindle, we have 62 and a quarter inches exactly. So overall length is only an inch, but what I've noticed is where that back bearing rests up against is is different than this one so we're going to see what the difference from that is there what do we got between so where the back bearing rests on the shaft it's exactly this is an inch and a half wider oh. so i have three quarters of an inch wider on both sides so when i say wider i mean the axle is going to be wider on the trailer so that's going to give me an extra three quarters of an inch on each side, which really, I don't think I need to compensate for that. In other words, I don't think I need to go to a different spacer because I wouldn't mind the uh, wheelbase being a little bit wider. Um, and the reason is, is um, it'll be a little more stable, of course. But the second reason is it's going to eliminate those fenders because the fenders are not wide enough. If I mount them to the trailer, they're not wide enough to cover that extra three quarter inch. So it'll allow me to do what I've really wanted to do from day one, which is create like a shelf system across the frame side and then up over the tire and, and then weld in my own fenders. And then I can use those fenders for like a shelf or a seat or a step. You couldn't step on these ones that I just took off. So that was uh, something that I, I think I anticipated when I bought the axle. It's, it's another project I got to tackle, but I'm excited to do it. So, so I know that I want to move the axle back because we have a problem when we get in the camper. If it's not hooked to the trailer, or if I don't have these stabilizers down with big blocks under them, it does a wheelie when someone comes behind the axle. Uh, so I wanna move it back so we don't ever have to worry about that. Um, so I went ahead and I bought some extra angle iron. I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna weld it in here so I can move the spring hanger back further connected to this. I still got to cut this off. I want to grind these down and just clean that up. These are the welds that I did when I only had a 15 amp supply in my garage at the rental house. Uh, and then I had my buddy put in that 20 amp plug when I built the trailer and boy did that help. It just made that welder work so much more smooth. So we're going to go ahead and start that part now. We got to cut this off. So we have a change of plans here. I was originally going to cut this off, take that scrap down there and weld it here, bolt it here. One spring hanger would go here on that new metal. Another spring hanger would go on this piece somewhere where this isn't. And I just was thinking about it. I'm going to actually take this whole thing off 
This serves two purposes. This is the reinforced piece of steel that you use to keep the trailer straight. This was a folding trailer before. And you would pull a pin and fold it. But I welded this thing straight. So I'm going to actually remove this whole thing. And then I'm going to clean up this whole side here. And I'm going to get a piece of angle, the same thickness, and just come down almost the whole length here. Fasten it to here. And then it'll all be clean, reinforced, and then put the spring hangers on that one brand new piece. It came off. Well, good morning, everybody. It's January 20th. It is about 1230 in the afternoon on Monday. And uh, it's taken me a little longer than I anticipated to get this project going. Of course, you just saw us cut out all the old stuff uh, and get this ready for the new stuff. Uh, it's just been a crazy, crazy week. Very busy at work. A lot of stuff going on, family stuff on the weekends. Uh, so I actually took today off. Uh, just so I could spend some time in here and try to get this ball rolling because camping season is now over, half over. And I'd like to get a few trips in, like last year, before it gets too hot. So a couple things have to happen here. Uh, I ended up just taking off the heavier metal piece that held the lighter duty spring hanger parts. And so now we're down to just bare frame, as you can see. It's just bare frame. I'm not going to weld the spring hangers to the bare frame because the bare frame is kind of flimsy, which is why Harbor Freight actually added that thicker piece. Uh, so I had a couple things to think about. The first thing I thought of is I take a piece of angle and just go all the way down to the front, which would mean having to remove a bunch of stuff up there, cut around the tongue bracket there. But what I decided to do is I'm just going to take a piece of angle and I'm going to go down to just past this joint here, kind of where they had it. I can use the factory bolt holes. I can bolt that angle in. It'll have a side, it'll have a bottom, it'll be thicker. And then I can weld the spring hangers to that angle iron and then put the springs in. And then of course, finally the axle. To be honest, I was a little bit intimidated and I've kind of put this project off, but I have to face that fear today and see if I can do this correctly. What am I intimidated about? I just want to make sure I do it right. You know, I've welded a lot of thinner metal building that that tire trailer, that's really thick metal, right? And I, uh, you can't mess that up. That's gotta be perfect. Otherwise you could lose your entire axle dragging down the street. So um, I had actually fantasized about just taking this, plopping it onto a trailer that's already built and then having it long enough to have a deck off the back to put the quads on, but it would defeat the whole purpose of, of my tiny camper. So <laughs> we're gonna stick to our guns. We're gonna make this tiny camper, get it complete someday. Uh, but for today, we're going to move on and try to get this work going. So here we go. So right here, I have the first piece of angle iron bolted in. It's exactly at the same level that the stock one was. Um, of course, it comes back a lot further, which is going to allow me to bring the axle back further. I don't want to go all the way back. You know, this is where the center of the tire was before. I want the center of the tire about here somewhere, transferring more weight to the front. Um, to make it more stable and uh, I can put it on a tongue jack and it's not going to do a wheelie when we get in the thing. A couple things that might give me an advantage here also is if I get all my measurements right, I drill all my holes where I am going to bolt and weld this to the frame. Uh, I can then remove this and then I can weld the spring hanger to this on the bench so I get a much better uh, environment to weld in. You know, these will be upside down like this. Uh, and I can stand up and just weld them on the bench over there instead of having to lay under here and hope everything goes right. So uh, from here, what I'm going to do now that I have it exactly where I want it is I'm going to um, mark some of the holes that are already drilled in the red frame. I'm going to go mark them on the back of this so I know where to drill some holes. I know there's like one here and a couple here. And then I'm going to create some of my own so I get four big bolts going through here. I'm also going to get four bolts through the bottom as well as, like I said, weld in sections also. So that when this is done, it is part of this frame no matter what. 
And then the big question will be if I can zip this to here satisfactory. So it's one solid piece, thereby making it safe. So there are three holes in the frame that are already pre-drilled, but are not pre-drilled in this piece. So I learned this method when I was building the gate on the tongue trailer. What you do is you take a little bit of grease, just a little bit of grease on your fingertip, okay? And then you take that grease, you find the hole up here and you put your finger in the hole and you draw a circle on the piece that needs to be drilled. And then when you take this thing out, it'll have a little round hole of grease. And that's what I used to do that one right there. So I now have three on the bottom lined up and drilled and one on the side, the top here. So I'm going to bolt these in place and then I'm going to drill the other ones I want while it's mounted. So now we can take a look at our handiwork here. It's bolted here, it's bolted there bolted here. I think these three are perfect, but I want one more on the end. So I'll have four on the bottom and I've got one here. I'm going to do another one on the other side of that joint and then I'm going to split the difference here and then another one in the back. So let's talk about this hole here that I just drilled. Okay. See how it's way up at the top there and there's just a tiny bit of metal left. Well, that hole has to be there because on the inside, is one of the cross members of the frame that mounts up here. This hole's special because this hole originally held the big thick spring hanger bracket here. So it's not as low as the other ones down the line where you can get right in the middle. So this has to be here uh, to support the cross member on the other side, even though it's bolted on the bottom and welded. I'm just putting it in there anyway. So that's why that looks a little hokey. All right, so now we have this much longer leaf spring hanger bracket holder thing in place. It's bolted in four places on the top, four places on the bottom. Uh, so now my question is, uh, when I did measure uh, the other leaf springs from rear to the rear of the leaf spring hangers, it was exact. The measurements were exact from this side to the other. So I'm just curious if I take this piece of metal and I line it up with the one that has not been drilled yet, if I can just mark those holes and drill them and then they'll bolt right in on the other side. So I'm going to try one hole bolted in place and see if the measurement is the same on the back. So just to satisfy my curiosity, um, I took the left side bracket, brought it over here, matched up to two bolt holes. And it turns out that it is exactly eight inches to the hair from the back of the trailer to the back of this angle, which is um, exactly what I have on the other side. So. I'm just going to mark the holes and drill them. Then I'll bolt the second one up and we'll go from there. So I've decided to move the axle back about an exactly a foot, which almost puts the hub in line with the front of that window. That's going to put more weight forward. That's also going to put more weight on that tongue that I'm not thoroughly stoked about. It just feels weak and flimsy. So I've already brainstormed how to increase the strength at the tongue. And after I do this, that's going to have to happen because it's just going to get more weak and flimsy. So um, we'll do that in another video. So for today, we're going to move the axle back a foot. Uh, I have about 10 and a half inches from 
the center of the tire to the eye bolt on the spring hanger. So this puts the tire right about here and it puts the spring hanger right there. There we go. <laughs> All right, so now we have our measurement of the center of the rear spring hanger is going to be 12 inches from this end to here. Of course, I'll make that exact when we get on the bench. This gap from here to here, if I haven't covered it, is exactly eight inches both sides. These have to be perfect because the ones I took off were perfectly the same. So in theory, if I duplicate on this hanger, if I duplicate on the other bracket, what I'm doing here, everything should calculate out. Of course, I'm gonna soft mount stuff and double check it. But So now I'm gonna unbolt this and I'm gonna weld on this spring hanger, see how it goes. You guys see my working partner over there? He's making sure that I do it right. He's now eight months old. He's 130, 130 pounds. I think I just killed my drill. I've never seen this. Absolutely nothing out of the drill. Look at that. I've never seen that in my whole life. Brand new battery. Wow, that's disappointing. I've always liked Makita's. Never had that happen. Hey, I'm trying to, hey, I'm trying to work under here, buddy. Can I just work, please? Can I just work on the trailer? <laughs> Ow. You big lion. I just want to work on the trailer, please. <laughs> Get off me. Get off me. 